technology graduate. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the six factors of grading. To understand the six factors of grading, we have to go back and look at the different grading categories, right? So according to the international grading system, we have the grading ranges as flawless, which is F. We then have internally flawless, which is IF. We then have very, very slightly included, VVS1 and VVS2. We then have very slightly included, VS1 and VS2. We then have slightly included, SI1 and SI2. We then have included, I1, I2 and I3. So each of these stones, any other stone that we get in the market is somehow categorized into some of these category of clarity grading, right? How exactly is this done? So six factors are very important to decide this clarity grade. So the graders who grade the, you know, each of these stones, they will consider the six factors. So let's get right into the six factors. What are these six factors that determine the clarity grade of a stone? The six factors start from size. What exactly is a size mean? The size of inclusion. Because all of these clarity grades are based upon the inclusion present inside a stone. So the size of inclusion matters hugely to give a proper clarity grade to a diamond. We then move on to the nature. What do we mean by nature here? The nature of the inclusion. Is it internally included or is it surface reaching inclusion? So as we saw in the previous video, internal inclusion is an inclusion or an impurity completely inside a diamond. Whereas the surface reaching inclusion is an inclusion or an impurity receding towards the surface of a diamond. So that is how we differentiate between internal inclusion and surface reaching inclusion. And depending upon whether if an inclusion is internally included or is it surface regionally included, the clarity grade will also deeply impact and change. So this is very, very important factor we have to consider. We then move on to the relief. What exactly do we mean by the relief? This is basically the transparency of the inclusion. Is it very transparent or is it very opaque? So to give you a better understanding, I will just give you a small example. Let's just say there is this one big white board, okay? And then there is a very big black colored circle and then there is a yellow colored circle. Which circle do we notice first? We obviously notice the black circle first because this basically has a high relief because the black circle is very contrast compared to the white background. Whereas the yellow circle has a very low relief because it is not that contrast compared to the black circle, right? Because the black and white combination is extremely opposite and the black really, really looks extremely vigorous compared to the yellow. The yellow is very mild and that is why it has a low relief. So this, depending upon this, if an inclusion has a low relief, then the clarity grade will be higher. Whereas if an inclusion is high relief, then the clarity grade will be very poor and very low. So it is not really, you know, uh, viable to buy a stone which has high relief inclusions. We then have reflection. So the fourth factor is reflection. What do we mean by reflections in here? So for example, let's say that there is a one inclusion inside a stone, okay? This inclusion can you know, appear to be so many because of the reflection present inside a stone. Even if the stone only has one inclusion, if there is a lot of reflection inside a stone, then it could be really, really looking like a lot of different inclusions present inside a stone. But in actual, it will be only one inclusion. So it is really, really important to look inside if the stone has high reflection or very low reflection. It is really, uh, you know, good to go for a stone which has no reflections at all because then the inclusions will not be uh, reflected many different times, right? And it will look very, very clear and neat. We then have the fifth factor, which is the uh, location. What do we mean by location? Location is a part or where exactly is the inclusion present. That is what we mean by location. So if an inclusion is present in the top of the crown or top of the table, then the location is very poor because everybody will be able to see the inclusion clearly. But if the inclusion is present completely under or in the pavilion sector, then people will not be able to see it at all or people will be able to see it only through a microscope. So that is a very good location for an inclusion to be present. So location also matters very highly. We then have the final factor, which is the number. How many number of inclusion is present inside a stone? If there is very low number of inclusion, then the clarity grade will be higher. But if there is very high number of inclusion, then the clarity grade will be lower. So it is always better to have low number of inclusions inside a stone. So that is about it for today, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video very shortly. Bye-bye.